Hi everyone. Well, hopefully we're getting to the end of this whole COVID-19 thing and learning new skills being stuck at home. But while I was stuck at home this year, I decided to learn a little bit about Tunisian crochet. Now, granted, I'm still a beginner. I still have a long way to go with it, but I thought I'd take you on the beginning part of my journey. I've been doing it for about a year now. Um, I started with this Japanese book. I'll post that here. If you can read images well or um, charts, um, then this will probably work for you. There are English versions available on Amazon. I'll post them below, but this is the one that I decided to start with. So I bought six different brands over the course of this year, and they are all housed in these three cases. So I'll show you which ones are combined and I'll tell you a little bit about each and I'll explain why I haven't decided to get rid of any of them. All right, stay tuned. has COVID been treating you? Uh, let me know how your year has gone below and have you picked up any new crafts since all of this started? Um, at the time of this recording, um, the vaccines have come out and majority are getting vaccinated, it looks like. So hopefully, you know, this will be over soon. But in the meantime, I've been picking up other new fiber crafts. Well, at least they're new to me. They've been around for generations for a really long time, but I decided to pick up a few and I thought I'd share what I've learned over this past year, in particular with the hooks that I've bought. But if you've never seen Tunisian crochet before, let me kind of show you some examples first. So this is the first piece I ever did. It's just a square, it's just a big oversized swatch square. And this is called uh, the Tunisian Simple Stitch. So the Tunisian Simple Stitch has these bars. And as you can see, it's a very dense, um, almost like a knitting type of fabric, which is why I love it, especially for, for blankets. And say if you look up craft books from 1960s, 1970s here in the States, then you may find them lumped in under what's called Afghan crochet and Afghan crochet hooks uh, because they these this type of crochet makes a nice dense blanket. In fact, I probably love this style is probably my favorite so far for blankets because knitting, oh my goodness, takes me forever to just get a scarf done. But Tunisian crochet goes so fast. It's fast like crochet, but you don't end up with all the holes in the fabric like you would with granny squares, for example. The back side looks a lot like the purl side when you're knitting. It has those bumps like the purl stitch. So really, really nice dense fabric. And there are hundreds of types of fabrics um, and stitches that you can do with Tunisian crochet. So what I plan to do is kind of demonstrate some of these little by little. But today, like I said, the focus would be on the hooks and the tools that I've used for this. Here's another one. This is probably my favorite one so far. This is the lattice stitch. So again, you can see how dense it is. Now, if I really pull on it, you can see some holes, but for the most part, it is not a holy fabric. It is pretty dense. And if I pull back, you can kind of see the, the pattern a little bit better. Same thing on the back. It kind of has that pearl bump knitted look and it's nice and thick. So this one's the lattice stitch. The other one is the Tunisian simple stitch. Um, but let's get into the hooks. First of all, let me show you the yarn that I'm using on this project. This is a blanket that I'm making my daughter. I did decide to go smaller. Um, they're probably about 10 inch squares. So this again is the Tunisian simple stitch. And so I decided to go smaller. I think I really like this size for the individual squares so that I can go like, I think it's gonna be four squares across and five squares down, and then do some type of crochet, basic, basic crochet edge on the side of this blanket. 
All right, so let's get to the hooks. So let me show you what I started with. So if you've seen any of my um, yarn craft videos, I kind of had them split between two channels for a long time. I had a lot of my fiber stuff on alpaca my yarn, but I found that majority of my viewers here have also transferred from scrapbooking and card making and journaling over to fiber crafts as well. So I'm just gonna keep it all on one channel. It's easier for me, it's easier for you. Um, but if you've seen those videos, I've told you how much I love Clover products. So this is a brand that you can easily get with a coupon at Joann's and I believe even at Michael's. And really to get started, this is all I had and this is sufficient. Um, these are the Tunisian crochet hooks by Clover. Now what's really cool with this set is it comes with really small sizes here of size E, which is 3.5 millimeters. And you can see this is an interchangeable set. So there's a screw on the other end. The other thing I really love about this set is look at that head. See how pointed that head is? That makes it very easy to go through the stitches. Another key with Tunisian crochet though is this part that comes back. Because you have to drag back through your project, it's very important to have this nice, I don't know how to describe it, but like the head is at the same height as the body and it's all even. This makes it very easy to pull those stitches on what's called the reverse pass. So I think I used a coupon on this and I got this set for about $45 and it comes with nine hooks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, it comes with nine hooks. And then these are the stoppers that go on the ends and they come with five of these. And what's nice is there's five stoppers and there's five cords. Let me show you how I put one of these together. So in these other pockets down here are the five cords. So you can kind of see one peeking here, there's two here, and there's two down here. So they're all different sizes, but let's go ahead and pull the shortest one out just to kind of show you how they go together. Now this yarn that I'm using for this particular project is a really thick, thick yarn. So I do go with my largest hook, which is the size L or eight millimeter. And so all you do is tie it there. And honestly, I have not had any problem with this unscrewing. I know sometimes ones that are familiar with interchangeable knitting needles have a problem with those knitting needles coming apart and things like that. But I don't get that at all with this. And I think in part, it's because it kind of spins, kind of like the Chowgu interchangeable needles where um, this isn't, I don't think this is fixed. I could be wrong, but I think it spins, but I don't have any problem with it at all coming apart or anything. So this is the interchangeable. Now what's nice with these interchangeable hooks is that you can also do this. Now you can either buy two sets so that you have an equal hook on each end, or sometimes what I do, especially if you're working in the round, you can go to say the next size needle that's smaller and you can attach that here. And you can end up with like what's called a crow hook or double-ended crochet hook. So I'll do my primary stitches on my um, on my pass with, with this bigger hook and then, you know, a return pass or something with the smaller hook. Um, you can, you can do Tunisian with two different size hooks, but you want to make sure they're very close in size so that your gauge is okay. I wouldn't go really big and then really, really small, but with one set, you can create, um, those double crow hooks if you wanted to. So true Tunisian is like size to like size on both ends, but in a pinch, you can, you can do this instead and be able to get, you know, more value out of this one set. All right, let me put this one up and I'll explain the next one. 
So since I had already started looking into color work and working in the round, um, I was curious about these that they call crow hooks or also Tunisian double, uh, double headed crochet hook or um, Tunisian Afghan hook in the round. So these shorter ones are really great for um, gloves, you know, with small wrists or sleeves, um, anything that you're gonna work in the round, hats. Um, so these double headed ones are really convenient for that and they're nice and short. So Clover also makes these and in my area, at least I've only found three sizes. I found them in H, I, and J. So a key to remember with uh, Tunisian crochet is say you usually use an H hook for a type of yarn, say a, a weight four yarn, um, you're probably going to want to use either the I or J. I usually use the J. Um, you'll want to size up in order to pull through and also for your uh, crochet not to curl too tightly. Tunisian crochet tends to curl and by going with a larger hook size, you can help minimize some of that curl. So these are also by Clover. So since I love Clover products so much, I went ahead and got those three and I started my first ones that I actually did with the Tunisian crochet was strictly with the wood. But um, I also knew from experience in times past that I really loved, um, loved metal as far as my knitting needles. I prefer metal over wood. So we'll get to that in a moment, but let me finish showing you some of the other wooden brands that I found. So the preferred and most common uh, Tunisian crochet hooks you're going to find, most of them are bamboo or wood. Um, that I guess is just the traditional, how it's been for, for years and years. So another brand that I really love is Chao Gu. I use Chao Gu for, um, for my interchangeable needles. I have both their bamboo set and their metal sets. So I wanted to see what their Tunisian um, connected ones were like. They do have an interchangeable bamboo Tunisian set. Uh, I do not have that one, um, but I wanted to see what their hooks were like and wow, do I love them. So I bought this particular set because I've been working with a really, really thick yarn. So this one is called Hue and Me and you know, you really do wanna go bigger than your yarn says. So the yarn here, the recommended is a size K and this is a bulky size five. Well, this needle here is an N and then this other one here is a P. So I just kinda wanted to see what they were like and wow, I love the heads on these. You can see how pointed they are here, but then again, if you look at the line, it has that nice flush line. The only thing that was weird to me on these Chagus, which I don't know if it's just the Etsy seller I got these from. I don't know if she had them sitting in the sun or this is just the way it is, the nature of bamboo. The coloring is a little funky on, on these, although she said they're brand new, so I don't know. Um, but they, they crochet fine. I've already tried them out. The reason why I liked these in particular is because of their tails. You can see this wooden bead here. This does not move. There's a lot on Amazon that the plastic actually pops through this, this bead. And I'm always afraid that the cord is going to snag my work. So I love that the Chaogu ones are fixed in place. They don't budge, they don't move. And the head is nice and pointy. I really love this type of cone point. Um, that is on these heads. These are really my favorite type of angle for Tunisian crochet I found. Same with this one. It does kind of have a, a little bit give to it where it spins, so it's not fixed. Um, so that makes it really handy. So I got two of these. These again are by Chaogu. They do have an interchangeable set as well. Um, but since I already have that uh, Takumi one, 
And those heads, you know, I really like them. They they work great for me. I didn't buy the, the Chow Gu one. Not saying I never will, but for now I have, you know, what I need and they work well. All right. Then the last set of wooden ones I got just for kicks, just to kind of see what they were like in comparison because they were so inexpensive is Knit Pal. Now Knit Pal, it comes with this red velvet bag and they come with all of these different sizes for, I wanna say it was like $12 and they have three different sets. So they have a much smaller set and then they have a much larger set. This is the set right in the middle. So this one uses the sizes more common to me, uh, which is seven millimeter, six and a half, um, eight, which is an L, nine M, 10 N, and 12 O, 12 millimeters. So these are really more the common sizes that I in particular like to work with, with Tunisian. And the reason why I bought these is because for this afghan that I'm working on with this super bulky, I knew I was going to need the crow uh, double-headed in order to be able to do some of the color work ones. And I'll demonstrate some of those videos here soon too. So again, this one was kind of interesting. It, they're really neat. They give you an instruction booklet and they even give you this little file because since it is so inexpensive, sometimes there are a couple of nicks or rough spots in the bamboo and all you do is just sand it down a little bit. I really haven't had to do much to these. I've already tried them out and um, I sanded a couple of the heads just a little bit, but I didn't have to go after it too crazy. So I just keep the little nail file that they gave me with my set. It came inside of that red velvet bag. And um, this is a really good beginner set. Um, you can make just about anything with this set right here because you can do the double-ended, you can do colors, you can do in the round, and you can even do the size Afghan squares that I'm working with. Uh, for this particular blanket. So if you're just wanting to try it out, this is probably the most inexpensive yet um, very good set that I could recommend that you start off with. All right, so that was the third brand. So the first brand was Clover, the second brand was Chagu, and then the third brand was Knit Pal um, of what I purchased. So you've probably seen Team Oil on my channel before. I have purchased their cases to house my crochet hooks. Um, my, um, what do you call, what brand was that? I think it was my Clover. My Clover crochet hooks are in a Timoy case. So I went ahead and just purchased the whole case because it came as like a kit. Now some of this stuff wasn't in there. I'll get to some of this in a moment, but they come with all of these metal hooks here. So I'll make sure to post those now. They also came with stitch markers and plastic darning needles and cable needles, as well as a row counter. And then it has a whole other side to it over here. And it came with a tape measure, these long stitch holders. It came with a plastic needle gauge and the scissors. So there's my Knit Pal needles. Those are in here. My Chow Gu are tucked in there. So these other miscellaneous little brands that I bought, I have stuck into this case with those because it has so much storage. Now I wanna say at the time when I purchased this, this was about $30, but if you do not buy the case, say you just wanna try out these needles, I have seen them on Amazon, I'll link them below, I think as low as between six to $10. So the reason why I wanted to try these is I really wanted to try a metal hook. And these were the ones that I could get the fastest, to, to be honest, because it's on Amazon Prime and they got it to me in a day. So they come with the number on this end and then of course it's all metal. So I really did enjoy it as far as how well it glides in comparison to bamboo. I really do love the metal, love the metal. Um, but I have found it does, especially since I'm working with a bulky yarn, it gets really heavy on this end. So if I were working with a less, say not a bulky yarn, 
say a sock yarn or even a size four yarn, I could probably handle it better and it would be okay for me. But with the bulky yarn in particular, this got, this gave me a lot of hand strain really quickly. So I ended up looking for other metal options, which is what led me to my next find. So my next find, so we're up to number five. My fifth find for Tunisian hooks are Susan Bates. And I don't know, these might be one of the oldest American brands that have been around on the market for a number of years. Um, the original Susan Bates ones, I found this really antique one that was plastic. And I'll show you the packaging. You know it's the antique ones if the paperwork on it says made in USA because Susan Bates is no longer made in USA. So this one, I got it simply because it's pink. That's the only reason why I got this. I usually don't use plastic hooks, but this one is actually very good. It slides very well and I love the head on this. Again, it has that nice, pointy tip on it that, you know, is very similar to the clover ones I have. Um, the only pain with this one is this cord is tight. So I'm gonna have to do something about this. I know soaking in hot water or, you know, all those other things. But the other thing I'm afraid of is if I soak it in hot water is this isn't really on here very well, stamped on here very well. And I'm afraid it's gonna wash off if I soak this whole thing in hot water. So I'm probably gonna try the coffee pot technique. There's some that heat up a coffee pot and you kind of just hold it around the edge and that heats up the cord and kind of helps you stretch it out. So I'll try that. Maybe I'll record it and post it on here for you guys. But that's not my favorite. These are my favorite. So Susan Bates, I don't know what year these are. Again, some of these are vintage, some of them are not. I've been finding them on eBay. I don't even know if they make it anymore, but I found this hook and it has been my go-to. It is beautiful. It's a nice, I could deal with probably a sharper head. Um, it is kind of round, but it still does the job very well. And it's very easy to move. This particular yarn just wants to cling to the hook. So this hook has been very good for this particular yarn. Let me show you. This one is a 20% wool. I'm sorry, yeah. 80% acrylic and 20% wool. So here you go, 80% acrylic. 20% wool, it's a bulky five, usually recommends like a size K. Now, I could not find this metal flexible uh, crochet hook in a larger size. So this one is a six millimeter or 10. Um, so the older Susan Bates flexible hooks as they called them, I'll show you the packaging here. Um, they have like this purple cord and this white thing that kind of, I don't know, goes down. This hasn't been too snaggy for me. I thought it would be, but I haven't had a problem with it yet. So, um, of course I like the chow goo better because it just stays on the end there. But as far as the quickness and ease, I really love these Susan Bates hooks. Now the newer versions have a clear hook, have a clear, uh, I don't know what you call this, clear tail to them. Now the end is still the same. It's still, you know, a little pokey here and this still moves. Um, the hook is still the same and it's still kind of that more rounded instead of pointy, but it works amazing. So I did buy one more because the hook looked like a different color to me. And I don't know if it's a new, even newer version of this hook, but I found these on eBay. They're about $9 a piece, including shipping. Um, you may be able to find them cheaper on some other websites, but then as once as you factor in shipping and everything else, they're all about the same, anywhere from seven to $9, uh, including shipping. 
So the Susan Bates ones have really been my go-to. Um, I've really, really enjoyed that hook. And so again, I store those here in this Tamoy bag as well. So if I'm on the go, like I was about a week ago, we had a mandatory evacuation at our house because some construction crew hit a gas line, a six inch gas pipe near our neighborhood and we were under mandatory evacuation for seven hours. And this is what I grabbed because this bag is able to hold so much in it. It has the straight ones, it has my bamboo circulars, it has the chow gu, it has the knit pal, has the Susan Bates, all in one bag. This is just so easy to grab and go. So if you're looking for something that can house a variety of hooks, um, even if you just wanna buy the bag, you can, you can buy just the bag without the long Afghan hooks if you don't want to use those. You can buy the case by itself. I will link it below. Again, it is on Amazon. Okay, so the last one was more of a splurge. I wanted to see what it was like and I've never owned this brand before. So this is brand number six, but the reason why I saved it for last is it's also pretty steep. So I would not recommend buying this one unless you really know you love Tunisian and you know you really love metal hooks. And that is Addy Click. So the Addy Click, the clincher with this is it comes with the hooks but it does not come with the cords or the stoppers. So my workaround at the moment is, I really don't feel like spending $20 on just stoppers right now. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with this. So it comes in this case and inside the case, it comes with, let me remove the cord because this did not come with it. It comes with these hooks. So it's really a mix. It's six metal hooks and two plastic hooks. So probably my favorite hook is this one right here, but I'll show you what you can, what I've been doing as far as a stopper. So of course you can get these cords at any length and I do have a longer one, but just for demo today, I'm gonna to use the really short one. It's easier to show on screen. So these are the really nice um, Addy, I guess rockets. Like if you have their knitting needles, you can use those same cords that you have with the Addy Click knitting needles, you can use with these crochet hooks. So that's why it's probably my guess of why they did not provide the cords with the crochet hook is most of their users are probably knitters and they already have these cords that are included in the knitting sets. So what's nice about these is there's no screw. These are truly you press them in, you feel the spring and twist, and it's in. There's no key locking mechanism. There's no screwing and unscrewing. It is just plug and play. So instead of buying a stopper, what I've been doing when I use this, let me show you the head on it. The head is very nice. It's actually a little bit, a little bit pointier than the Susan Bates one, but I will say I have noticed that this area right here is more shallow. So using a super thick yarn isn't great with this metal hook, like what I can get away with with my Susan Bates one. But what I'm using as a stopper is I'm just picking up the largest acrylic hook, which is a nine millimeter. They're really pretty. I mean, as far as pretty effect, these are probably the prettiest ones I have, but um, has this nice, resin gold look. Well, I just use this as my stopper. I just get this big crochet hook because it's still really light since it's just this resin. I have not mastered this whole click system thing. Hold on. There we go. So what I do here is I just crochet with this end and let this dangle down and this is my stopper. And it, it's worked just fine this way. So I don't know. I don't know that I'll buy stoppers at this point because this method is working for me. Um, the way I crochet, especially when I use the longer cord, this just lays flat, so it's not in my way. It lays flat, you know, sometimes I'll tuck it under the piece if the piece is really long and I'll just work with this one hook. 
while this just lays flat. So that's been fine for me. I haven't needed to buy the stoppers while still getting to enjoy the use of, of the hook. And the same thing with this, since it's an interchangeable set, if you went with just one size bigger or one size smaller, you could get that double, um, that double crochet. Let me show you that real quick. So like I showed you before with the Clover set, but instead this is the a metal set, the Addy Clicks, um, their sizes are very close together. So really you could, you could work with two different size needles because they're so close in size, especially these two. They're so close, you can make that double in order to make the uh, work in the round for yourself. Now this is kind of long for working <laughs> working in the round in comparison to the wooden, the short wooden uh, clovers. So, um, you know, but just showing you that with these interchangeable sets, you really get that nice flexibility that you could turn them into double ended hooks if you wanted to. So those are the six brands that I have started with. Um, I started off with bamboo because, um, that's what I've seen most demonstrated with or with bamboo and the bamboo, um, is a little grippier. So makes it a little bit easier on that reverse pass. Um, but then I wanted something less grippy with the particular yarn I'm using. So I wanted to try metal and that's why I kind of advanced over to these metal hooks. So I hope today's demo gives you a good um, idea of what variety of Tunisian hooks are available out there for you. Again, just look under different names. Look under flexible Afghan hook. Look under Afghan hook, um, double headed crochet hook. Um, any of these will work for Tunisian crochet. And then of course you have the interchangeable sets as well, either in metal or in bamboo. A couple of other brands you might want to check out. There is the Chowgu Interchangeables in Bamboo. Um, there's also the Wooden by, I think, Knit Picks or Knit Pro, Knitter's Pride. There's several out there, um, but these are the six that I have and that I've personally tried out. And I honestly don't plan to get rid of any of them at this point. They all have a unique, special use for, you know, different projects. So... Hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.